I'm Robert Kinzel with Nomium, and this is a new edition of Business Casual, our first of 2021. Today, we are joined by Cindy and Brad of the Story Studio, and we're going to just jump right into it. So mm -hmm. uh, both of you, Cindy and Brad, can you yeah. tell us quickly about yourself? Who are you? Where did you come from? Uh, how did you get into the Story Studio? Uh, well, I'll start. Um, my name is Cindy. We're a married couple, so this is us uh, social distancing. Uh, we work for a company uh, which was founded by Kevin Allison, and that is the Story Studio. And we teach storytelling for uh, business, for corporate, and also for people who want to perform. And we also teach storytelling for personal growth. So it's a really wonderful organization that helps people um, share important messages or connect with people or entertain people uh, through the power of sharing stories and narratives. On a personal level, uh, our own backgrounds, we, were, we are both uh, professional perform performers. Mm -hmm. We have been storytellers on stage and theater producers for decades now. And we eventually came around to doing this when uh, the power and uh, versatility of being able to tell a story and create a narrative in the corporate world became a, sort of a more recognized skill as you know coming around i guess around the late 2000s late aughts probably mm -hmm. yeah and we'd already started teaching storytelling and now we're doing it uh in the corporate world as well yeah awesome it sounds like it's a, a nice transition something you really enjoy doing most people who are are into arts are passionate about it and and you've moved that into the business sector so, well, I know mm -hmm. the origin story of it was I was at a storytelling show um, and the organization running that show was looking for volunteers to teach storytelling in a community setting. Um, and I was like, that might be a great way to give back. And the big surprise to me was that I discovered through working with them that I enjoyed teaching storytelling as much as I enjoyed getting on stage. Um, I think I really it just really inspires me to watch people uh, find their voice and figure out how to communicate more effectively. Um, sort of the, you know, everybody wants to be heard and everybody wants to be heard saying what they mean and to be able to help somebody and facilitate that's really exciting. So when a position opened up at the story studio, one of my friends who was working there at the time and she still does is Don Frazier. Um, she recommended me because she knew how much I love this work. And once I sort of jumped in with both feet, it was just, um, you know, more. And so I transitioned from making my living in many different ways, um, you know, anything from bartending to uh, doing commercials to voiceover. I transitioned from all of that um, to making my full living doing storytelling and teaching it. And I just love it. And I, I love going into uh, businesses and finding out who people are and helping helping businesses thrive. Yeah, the biggest revelation for me, I think, was going into the corporate world because I, I come from totally outside the corporate world. I had no idea what to expect. Uh, and then I got my first my first job was actually in Madrid. They flew me around the world and you know uh, <laughs> got me into this high rise, this Fortune 500 company. And I didn't know what I was walking into at all. I mean, I knew how to teach storytelling or whatever, but I'm mm -hmm. walking into this thing. And what I found and what was a, a, a big, it shouldn't have been a big surprise for me now that I, you know, now that I'm years on into doing it. But at the time it was kind of a revelation. This was that people, you know, it was, it was just people. It was people who uh, were doing work that was valuable to them, that meant something to them, it was a reflection of, the the values uh that had been honed through years of experience and years of really thinking very carefully about what they do in the career they'd chosen mm -hmm. and so my job was actually surprisingly easy because it was just about you know letting them understand that like those experiences that had defined those values and helped them to choose the work they were doing those experiences were what we were going to use to create stories that was yeah the raw material right there and once I kind of, you know, made that clear, it's what we were doing, suddenly everyone's eyes lit up and everyone, you know, closed their laptops and put their phones in their pockets. 
and we were all on board suddenly and it was uh it was a revelation for me and it was a revelation for them mm. and it has become my favorite kind of teaching now mm. no that's awesome to hear we we at nomium we do storytelling in our communication courses as well and we know that every once in a while there's some pushback people say we don't need storytelling we've got all the facts we've got all the statistics but something that you just said we're using the employees stories those mm -hmm. resources are there so mm -hmm. it's it, it, as long as we can get people like the story studio to to facilitate that to open that up and get people speaking their stories yeah that 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 fodder already exists so that's a wonderful thing about storytelling yeah well, i think the you know the thing that uh, ended up coming out i was talking to someone in one of the corporate workshops about this one day and it's it's because you care about what you do. You think that what you do has value and you're contributing to the world. And you're mm -hmm. just telling us why it has value and how you came to understand that value. Mm. That's it. It's mm -hmm. really, it's not complicated at all. Yeah. You know? um, I also think that, you know, knowing that we make an impact, you know, there was one company that we came into um, and you know, we're kind of used to, you know, people are kind of told you have to do this. They, not everybody just signs up for it. So we had the typical arms folded, like prove to me that this is going to be worth my time um, with a, a company that was selling um, uh, services for business travelers. And we worked with three separate teams and they had a huge meeting coming up and everybody um, who was going to be leading that meeting had gone through our training and the training itself, once they got started, they really got it. But when they did that big meeting, they had brought in uh, a number of companies that had not yet worked with them. And for each service they had, somebody had a personal story about a client they worked with, about how they personally had worked with some of the software or personally utilized some of the services. So every single piece was hit with, and let me give you an example of this in action. Um, at the end, um, they made, I think they said it was $900,000 worth of sales. Um, they contacted me to let me know it was because of the storytelling that the feedback they received from the people who had been observing was the best part of this was those stories. It made everything clear and one of the executives finally just was looking at all this and said, what is going on in these storytelling classes? All I know is, you know, I, I spend a minimal amount of money to get you all trained. And on the flip side, I make $900,000 in one day. And how can we do this at scale? And that is the power, the power of, I have something technical to share with you, but now let me give you an example on how I personally witnessed this affect people's lives in a positive way. And that's exciting. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. That actually, you know what, I think with these little history stories that you're revealing, you've already covered the second question I was going to ask you, which was <laughs> what interesting facts or stories would mm. you like just the the average business person to know whether that's about you personally whether that's about the story studio or whether that's just about storytelling in, in general but is there uh, and you've already done some of that but is there any are there any other i guess insights that you think the average business person around the world that might be watching this uh should know about storytelling well, and business or just you in general there's a recent one that we were we were actually and this is going to jump into what i know is the third question how have we transitioned <laughs> we're just screwing up this interview <laughs> well, let me just go to the third question that no go ahead <laughs> yeah. but we 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 have been uh signed up to work with uh, a science organization that works around um uh environment and most mostly within the oceans and fishing and we were supposed to go to their offices in New England um, on March 17th uh, last year, and then the pandemic hit. And they kept putting it off. Uh, the big reason they were bringing us in was for team building, that they had a lot of uh, people who were scientists who were 
really lovely people, but everybody sort of had their own silo and kept to themselves. They weren't extroverts and they thought storytelling might be the thing that brings them together, but they really wanted to do this in person. By October, it was obvious that's not going to happen anytime soon and they still need this storytelling um, and, and communicating, um, sorry, and this um, team building piece, especially now that they're in the pandemic. So we did it online uh, and Brad and I led that as a team and they were, because it was team building, it was, they, you know, we sort of hit the, you know, the piece on this about how this can help you communicate about science, but it's also how you can connect with others. So the stories, they weren't like put like you have to do a science story. Um, you could tell any story, you could tell a personal story or to connect with others or science story. So we got both. But in the end, even the science stories connected people. Um, and at the end of that one, you know, one person said, this is the most connected and relaxed I have felt in work since the pandemic hit. And more than one person said, how can we communicate like this more often? Um, you know, now I feel I know so much more about my coworkers and their lives and what they care about. And, you know, I always knew these were great people, but now I understand why. So it connected a team and you can do this within your team or with a client. If you want to connect with a client, with a client's business, um, stories in, in, encourage trust. I tell you a little bit about myself. You know how, why, what is important to me and how I tick. And in the end, that's going to make you feel more comfortable trusting me with what's important to you. I think the other so, thing is that you start to, when you start to think in terms of stories and constructing stories from your own personal experiences, mm. I think it also begins to make you sensitive to how much people are bringing to their own, like other people you deal with are bringing their own experiences to the table mm -hmm. in ways that you don't, you know, uh, think about it. this one woman we work with uh she had this great story about she had been brought in to help this guy uh was there a patriarch of a family who had a big family owned company that he was he was getting ready to uh retire none of his kids wanted to take it over um and he was gonna sell it off and they were brought in basically uh it was a you know um a uh compliance firm and their job was to come in and sort of oversee the nuts and bolts of selling off this company for this guy and they go in to talk to him and his lawyer and when she arrives at his office uh, she realizes that his office is built into his home which is built on top of the company his <laughs> home and office are the top floor of this multi-million dollar company <laughs> and that this is like he lives on top of his life's work mm. and she walked in and the guy looked absolutely miserable uh and she at some point kind of looked past the lawyer who was doing all the talking and she asked the guy you know do you actually want to sell this company and you know it was uh sort of seeing that this guy's entire life story his entire life story was wrapped up in this in this company and he was and he was like and he and he sort of said no and he started talking about his life story and how it had all been wrapped up in the company and how he'd raised his family kind of essentially at this company and she was like you know there are other ways we can free up this capital and you know create a conservancy around you know keeping the business going without you selling the company and there are other solutions besides just the most obvious solution. Mm. Why don't we talk about those? And it completely like, you know, it, it, it took him from, uh, you know, facing having to give up the thing that, you know, had been the, one of the biggest parts of his life to being able to still play a role and know that it was secure mm. uh, as he eased into later life. So. I don't know, but it was, but it was her, you know, she started, when she started thinking about her own story, she started thinking about his stories as well and the stories of her clients. So it's all of those experiences are playing into it and you start to, you start to become sensitive to that. And I want to point out, especially with that one, I think this is a great example. You know, it's, we went into that group with um, some chosen uh, sort of catchphrases. Um, mm -hmm. We call them controlling ideas, you know, your key message. And we had lifted their key messages out of their marketing materials. 
And mm. that incredibly warm and human story came out of their marketing materials with the key message uh, to us, we under, you know, we understand that business is always personal, you know, and mm -hmm. in writing, that's a nice line, but you back that up with a story and then there is a whole other level of warmth to that message. Absolutely. And, and that's, that's what we do. Yeah. No, that's awesome. And I, and going back to the effects of storytelling in business or just socially, you know, when we do some influence training, we often talk about assertiveness and in terms of how people communicate. Some people are great listeners and they ask questions and they, they bring people together. Uh, other people are very assertive, but assertiveness is often the least represented in, in a group or a company. So how do we get people to be more assertive? Well, if we give them a chance to speak and we give mm. them a platform to share their personal stories, that can bring out the assertiveness that can bring out their true, you know, desires or feelings about an issue like selling their company, uh, which gets into trust, as you said, and, 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 and showing people that there's a bit of vulnerability there. If you're revealing yeah. your, your past successes, your past mistakes, it really does create that, that rapport. Yeah. And the rapport is everything. We want to work with people we like, especially if we're going to be working with them a lot. And we want to work with people we trust. Um, I know that, um, you have a great story about connecting with somebody over, I believe it's motorcycles. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I actually, that popped into my head when you said something earlier about, you know, just sharing stories in general, not even in, in, in a business pitch or anything, but just using personal stories in a workshop. Mm -hmm. I share, I often, when I'm doing storytelling or sometimes it's personal branding, but we're using stories to share our personal brand and, and, and what we're, developing in our in our professional lives and I I will often share a story that is not a business story because I want the participants to feel comfortable using their life it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be oh here's something that happened to me in the office you know go go beyond this job go go to your vacations go to grad school or whatever you did and I yeah I share a story about a motorcycle trip and 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 what I learned from it and I do bring that in with a business since I tell the non-business story and then I bring it in a business direction with that, that controlling idea that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And I later had somebody come up to me and, and say, I love motorcycles. And for every single break, we were just connecting. And then it went from motorcycles and it, then it went into other business ideas and uh, communication research. So just that one connection, you never know. If you say, oh, I was playing basketball last weekend, you never know who else might be a basketball player. And if they happen to be the CFO that you've never met, for example, that's a, that can be a great a, a immediate initial bond. My, my favorite version of this is uh, I work with this guy uh, and he had this story about before it was a different, it was at a tech company, but before that he'd come from an advertising background and he'd been in an ad firm in LA mm. and he was young, like fresh out of school. Uh, and they were pitching at the, do do the Dodgers, right? Uh, to, get the, to get the Dodgers ad campaign. And he was put on the team. It was like they're, they're, you know, high, like their highest guys are going into this pitch, but like none of their highest guys had been baseball players. And they knew that he'd been a baseball player when he was young and like a good one. So they put him on the team and his job was basically just to sort of like represent they knew a baseball player and keep his mouth shut because he was <laughs> such a rookie. Um, but they had, but they also had to give him like some kind of token thing to do because he was there and it would be weird to have him sit there be a silent. So they gave him like a little token piece of the presentation and they went in to do this thing and he, and he, they comes around to him and unbeknownst to all of them, he actually, he had uh, had he had an opportunity to pitch a game at Dodger Stadium, mm. and when none of them knew that he had this opportunity, and he had out of the stupidity of youth, and having just the the terrible priorities you have when you're a high school kid. It was a high school, even a high school baseball player. They were going to get a, they were going to get an honorary game in Dodger Stadium. He didn't show up for it. <laughs> he didn't show up for it because he was just being a dumb kid. And he didn't realize, like his his dad was a lifelong Dodger fan, and his dad like would would have loved nothing more mm. than to see his son 
pitch a game in Dodger Stadium because he was like so young and so stupid. He just didn't think about that. And he passed up the opportunity to pitch a game in the stadium they were in because they were in like the offices of the stadium pitching for this uh, ad buy. And and he was like, he was like, you know, I've I've regretted it every day as an adult. Um, and what I'm I'm hoping for today is that I can finally tell my dad I pitched in Dodger Stadium and I won. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. And he did, like he did it. They got they got the uh, it totally charmed the pants off the Dodgers guys and, and they got the business. Um, but it was just this. It was kind of a last minute pivot to say, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to tell these people like, like my own personal relationship with what they're doing Mm -hmm. here. That's really cool. You know? Uh, And it was a great story. Yeah. Awesome. Well, let's, let's move on to our, our third and kind of our last big question. And this is something I know, Cindy, you, you briefly mentioned this. Uh, You knew this question was coming up. This year, I know that you both do virtual, uh, you do in-person training. Most people still in business and in our our field this year have converted to virtual at some level. Uh, What have your experiences be, I can't even talk now. What have your experiences been moving from in-person storytelling workshops to the virtual facilitation world? And is there any insight and tips you could share with us? Well, we had already started doing it um, last December because we had so many people that wanted to take classes with us but didn't live in this, the three cities that we do live classes. The December um, before the pandemic. December before yeah. the pandemic, yes. So we, um, you know, we, we teach live classes in New York, Minneapolis, and LA. And then with corporate, we often travel all over the world, but we go to businesses who bring us in, but we have open classes and we were getting a lot of feelers for open classes from people that lived in Costa Rica or Paris or Hong Kong. And so we had started um, doing open classes virtually. And so when we found we had to pivot, we'd already done all the legwork, which was fabulous. And we had had chosen Zoom already. So we had already learned that the benefits of teaching online is you can learn from anywhere in the world and you can get students from anywhere in the world. When it came to the pandemic, the first thing that happened was everybody said, oh, we'll just wait until the pandemic passes. <laughs> so we kind of, you know. It's going to be a month. Oh, we were. How much we, cash does your we business were, have on hand? We were. We were <laughs> In the final stages of scheduling um, five workshops in Amsterdam, and we had already talked about how we were going (laughs) to piggyback that with a trip to Europe. You know, this is what we were looking at for April and May. And we love Amsterdam too. (laughs) And and it all it all stopped, and um, it took a while for people to say, "Wow, like we got to come back." But then they started coming back. The thing that I had noticed already, and I'm noticing it in these classes, is, you know, this had actually happened yesterday as well. I had a meeting with someone, and that meeting started with um, how you doing, what's going on, and little personal stories. I think we spent 15 minutes on, you know, and this is not a person I know well, and I felt I know that knew this person so much better at the end of that 15 minutes, but there's this need, this desire to connect and to check in with people and how are you doing? So right now, when we're feeling distanced, stories is one of the sort of cure-alls for that feeling. So there's this thing of knowing that people are desperate to connect and stories feed that need Um, When we are doing the corporate workshops, we're just hearing people saying, you know, as I've already said, you know, I felt more relaxed and more connected. Um, It's that team building piece. And um, what we've learned is that um, where I think in person is always preferable. um, Right now, this is filling a need and people are they're hungry to connect. They're hungry to hear each other's stories. They're hungry to 
check in with people. They're hungry to remember that there's a whole world that is not about the, the, the crisis is going on right now. Um, and who people are, successes they've had, desires that they have for their future, for the future of the company and all of that. So in the transition, you know, there was a little bit of, of figuring out how we're going to break out into different rooms, depending on which application you have. Uh, even today, our meeting started with the, the lighting looks a little weird and how can, you know, so there's <laughs> becoming, you know, technically uh, more advanced. And I think there's always room for improvement there. Um, yeah, I think that, I, you know, the technical side of it, you know, this is, it's a, it's a, it's a very artificial medium for a lot of people. And it's a big adjustment for me. I've, I've had, you know, uh, the confinement of the little box on the screen and that kind of stuff is not how I'm used to doing what I do. And I, mm -hmm. and I, you know, people at this point are, there was a lot of, when all this started, there was a lot of like, well, this is how it's going to be from now on and everything's going to change and it's all going to be digital and virtual and it's all we're working from home and yada, yada, yada. And that's, I don't think like, I always say to people, you know, everyone thought that uh, movies were going to kill radio and TV was going to kill movies. And that's not what happens mm -hmm. with new technology. What people end up wanting is both. They don't want yeah. one over the other. They want to have both. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing with this. When this pandemic is over, uh, people are going to want to go back to meeting in person and having in-person events, but they're also going to want to keep everything that worked mm -hmm. from the virtual world. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to have to be able to, it's not a matter of like, you have to adjust this whole new way of doing things. It's that you have to adjust to pivoting back and forth between the two environments. Mm -hmm. And having some facility with that's going to be necessary, but it also, it also kind of starts with getting comfortable with having something to say, regardless of the environment, whether it's a digital environment or a live and in-person environment. That's where it all starts. It all starts with knowing what you want to communicate in the first place. Mm -hmm. And if you've got if you've got something compelling to say and something compelling that people want to hear, they'll put up with a lot of you trying to figure out the technology or whatever else it is to get to that because mm -hmm. they want to connect with you and they want to know what you have to say. Yeah. You know? So I think, you know, to sort of tie up with that, what we've learned is um, that this is not incredibly being able to do this um for anybody anywhere in the world is going to open us up to working with people um and teams you know there's a couple of companies that we have where the teams are spread out all over the world mm -hmm. um and through virtual training you know they get to do team building with people who are in europe and la and you know uh in the caribbean you know so it's this thing of uh we're able to connect and that's going to stay and there are going to be people who are going to want to stay with the, with the virtual training even when we can get back in person um and then there's the people who are really going to want to connect and team build and reconnect with people in person and we'll be doing that as well well i think there's one not i don't think everyone's going to have to deal with this as a because they're not facilitators but people in our our shoes Mm -hmm. are likely in 2021 going to realize that there's going to be in-person meetings, but some people are still dialing in and those video conferences are happening at the same time. Mm -hmm. And this is yeah. another just com level of complexity that people like us are going to have to deal with at some point. We've got a room of 10 people, but there's five more online and they are supposed to be equal participants. And how do we include them and give them enough attention chances to participate and it's 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 challenging but that's something i think no it's it's we're starting to talk about it a bit but since right. it hasn't happened yet it's yeah. it, i think you know it's happened in the past there's been meetings where in trainings that, that we that i've done where we had that in a, in a in a company's office but i think for most people in the world they're getting comfortable with the the virtual or they're already comfortable with it, but then now it's going to get even more complex, depending on your role. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Um, so let me just ask you guys, thank you for, for sharing all these stories. Um, you know, we didn't, anybody watching this, we didn't actually plan these stories. We knew the talking points, but the stories that you're hearing from Brad and Cindy today are not planned and rehearsed. These are just casual. That's what this whole webinar series is. It's business casual. So that's another 
I guess, uh, another piece of evidence of storytelling. It just happens and it works and it's natural. I tell people, you know, when's the last time you shared a story? And they'll say, I don't know, because they're thinking, you know, when do they stand up in front of a group and go, I have something to say once upon a time, you know, it's like, no, no, no. When you were at lunch yesterday with your colleague, I guarantee you told at least three stories over your lunch, just casually right. speaking. You just didn't think they were stories. Anyways, sorry for rambling on about that. I want to ask you guys one more thing mm -hmm. and we'll put whatever links you want um, in our video description and, and uh, to the story studio and whatever else uh, you sent us. This mm -hmm. is, I guess, the pitch, your pitch. Uh, who should contact you? Who should contact the Story Studio? What do you guys have going on? Anything from, you know, people in the corporate world to just mm -hmm. average solo business people? So um, anybody who wants to get better at storytelling, which is pretty vague. Uh, so, you know, stories are a tool for influence. So whether you are selling a project uh, selling um, yourself, and we, we, we partnered with Storytelling for Personal Branding. Um, you know, we do a lot of stuff with nonprofits over fundraising, the stories that you tell to encourage people to want to support your business. So if you are trying to sell a product, sell yourself, sell an idea within your company, um, looking to connect with people, um, we can help. Uh, and that would be storytelling for business. For people who want to get, you know, there is an, a live, exciting world of storytelling as entertainment. So for those who want to get on stage, and right now there's a lot of virtual stages, we, um, we teach storytelling for performance. And then storytelling for personal growth, which is connected often with the stories we tell ourselves. Um, and we often have like people who um, maybe speak English as a second language, looking to practice their skills. And the magic there is that they really, people really do learn. You don't have to have perfect language skills to be perfectly understood. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, we do that personal growth. Also, we, we've had people join that because um, they're new to the dating world after a divorce and uh, looking to improve their ability to do small talk, you know, over small prompts. Also, I'm I'm going to uh, to go back to the corporate stuff real quick. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna toot Cindy's horn for her um, because one of the things that we do that I that I think so many of our corporate clients have been mm -hmm. uh, so impressed with is we do a lot of customized workshops. People come to us and they're like, "This is what we're doing. This is the project. This is the team. Mm. This is where we're at. Whatever else." And we will build a customized workshop that is specifically geared to their needs or their industry or wherever they're wherever that team is at and right. the person who really builds those programs is cindy um i go in oftentimes uh with material she's prepared and go in and uh and do the presentation and am the big star for the day uh off at some you know corporate headquarters in uh Amsterdam or Madrid or whatever else, but like, you know, but the person who really sort of uh, like digs deep and digs into uh, where these clients are at and what their needs are, uh, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it really is Cindy and she, and it consistently people come back to us and they're like, wow, you really took the time to understand what we do and where we were. Yeah. So. Uh, and that's, 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 uh, satisfying it's it's satisfying to know that um to learn about new businesses and also to be able to help <clears throat> but we we teach in uh three different ways we do open workshops um and those i think are probably already listed we are at the turn of the year so um i think they're already on our website so you know you can just sign up and those are actually incredibly affordable most of them are mm -hmm. two-day workshops right now and they uh vary dates and times um, we also do corporate workshops where you connect with us. Um, we talk about your needs and we do anything from a 30 minute keynote. Um, the most common workshops are either 90 minutes or four hours. And the four hours right now are usually divided up into two hour segments um, virtually. We've also done recurring things that you know unfold over weeks. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. so. we can do that. And then we do one-on-one -on -one training. So for people who just want to dig in because they have a presentation coming up or uh, want to improve their skills, um, 
quickly and thoroughly and specifically, we do a lot of, of work one-on-one -on -one and one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh, if you want to know more, um, it is um, thestorystudio.org. And if you want to reach out, you reach out to me. And that's Cindy with a Y, so C-Y-N-D-I, at thestorystudio.org. Um, also, we have a YouTube channel, and we should give you the link to that. Uh, right now, what, we're doing a lot of low-cost or free webinars as a way to give back during this truly chaotic time. Um, and so there's a lot of really great videos that are free. Um, and it's a mix of business and performance, the webinars. And it is the nice thing about the webinars is that there's a lot of sort of little nuances of storytelling. We've, mm -hmm. always, we've always wanted to do programming that was directed at some of the smaller uh, components of crafting a story. And mm -hmm. this has kind of given us the opportunity to do that. Yeah, whether so. it's storytelling for building connection or uh, we have stories to inspire. On the performance level, Brad just taught a real, um, really well-received one on how to tell stories where you're the villain, which I think is is more a performance thing. But you know, there's some real nuances to connecting with people as they talk about the mistakes they've made. Yeah. So we've got um, how to flesh out stories, uh, the characters in your stories. Uh, we did storytelling. That's coming up. Yeah, we did storytelling for job interviews, um, and that was so successful. We're going to be bringing that one back as a free webinar, because we know that a lot of people are in the market right now. So that'll be coming up in the spring. But all That's of that awesome. information can be found. Um, you know, we'll send you the link. Yeah, we'll yeah. send you the links. Sounds good. I've taken one of your virtual ones uh, before. COVID, when you mentioned when you had started doing in 2019 virtual, I joined one of, um, it wasn't e even with either of you either, it was from somebody else Gail within Thomas. the story studio. Yes, it was Gail. And it, you know, it was a two day, I think it was 90 minutes, but it was twice. So you have 90 minutes and then you come back another day and you do another 90 minutes. And I think the good thing that I would say about that is somebody who does that is going to leave not only with a story that they've shared and gotten feedback on, but it's something they can use. So they're leaving with a story that they can share at the drop of a hat, whether that's at a party or it's at a job interview, but then they framework of how to, perf uh, you know, I say perfect that story to, mm -hmm. to hopefully perfect it is there. So they're learning, not just here's one story that you leave with that's useful. The framework is there for them to continue using the story yeah. framework that they learn and applying that with any of their other previous experiences. And I think that's actually the one thing that we do really well. And that curriculum was built by Kevin Allison, who he's a true master, but you know, there's a lot of people teaching storytelling and some of them focus on structure. Some of them focus on more of the, you know, airy fairy kind of touchy feely elements. Um, and we kind of really just sort of laser focus on here's the structure. If you paint pictures with your words, use a little bit of dialogue, allow us to see things and hear things from inside your head, um, you know, so that the audience gets to vicariously live the story with you, you know, then you've got something which is going to really grab people. And then in business, you want, you know, a clear message. So we talk about messaging and how, you know, stories give an example that make those messages pop. But we're, we're very technical in what we teach, but the end result is, is quite connected and warm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At Absolutely. the end of the day, though, is it is a very practical, very concrete skill. Yeah. yeah. And it's everyone can improve on it. You know, we, we've had people who are like, I thought I knew how to tell a story, but the, the tips and tricks that I learned from you uh, are game changing. And then other people who were come in saying, I'm here because I was told I'm really bad at this. And they actually <laughs> walk away um, knowing how to do it, you know, and mm -hmm. it's demystified. Excellent. I, I always, I love making the uh, you know, the, the analogy, it is kind of like cooking. Like if I've been cooking Italian food for so long and it's really good, but Hey, I want to go and cook some Mexican food. I might need some feedback on that. I need to go to a cooking class that specializes in that. So if I'm telling different stories, I need, I need new mm -hmm. feedback. I need to work on, uh, polishing that. Uh, so whether it's learning the framework of storytelling or someone like me that already knows it, just getting other people involved to tell me that feedback or to write me that feedback is, is something that I 
that I benefit from. So I just want to offer one bit of parting advice to uh, all of all of the potential clients out there. One time Cindy was mm -hmm. called in for a, a workshop, teach workshop. It was all people who were bad communicators and they had, they had brought <laughs> To, you know, help them be better communicators, but they didn't tell the people that enrolled in the class. That's why they were in there. So what they didn't realize that they were considered to be a bad communicator until they walked into the room and saw everyone they thought of as a bad communicator. And it was a chilly way to conduct a workshop. <laughs> Uh, that everyone is... having gotten inferred bad news <laughs> upon walking in the door. Yeah, so, you know? so tell people what you're doing. <laughs> Let's be transparent. <laughs> That's awesome. That's got a good business uh, controlling idea. The good moral of the story there. But... Yeah. Well, mm. excellent. Thank you so much for sharing your experience and sharing your time with us. Uh, mm. I know we will be uh, personally talking more in 2021 looking forward to uh, future collaborations yes and for anybody else what, what is it we enjoy working with you and with oh. no <laughs> thank you yeah. well and and to all the people watching this again the links contact links uh, will be in the video description and if you are somebody who is in pretty much any line of business and you'd like to be on business casual or if you would like to recommend somebody or if you have a question about a certain industry that you want to know more about we can try to go find somebody to be in one of these interviews so thanks for watching cindy and brad thank you so much Bye. thank you for having us